Welcome back to Awesome Table Badges Part 3. In this video I'm going to be talking about the Class Roster tab and the Template tab. So these two go hand in hand. Um, the Class Roster tab is actually the Awesome Table view of our Google Sheet. So this exact information is what's driving the view of this table. So now let's, the first thing I'd like to do is kind of look at some of the corresponding uh, data that how, how this is all connected. So the easiest one is the, the student column. So if we go to the Google Sheet, we'll notice here this is student and my students are listed here. The category filter allows me to create this effect of being able to filter my students in this way. So that's what that's there for. Now look at award. So this is actually my button for awarding achievements to my students. Um, so the way that looks on the actual Google Sheet is pretty interesting. So here's award and look there is no data in that column. And that's because this this Google Sheet is tightly related to our template. So if we go over to the template, we see we have an award column, and we're essentially building with placeholders a URL to be displayed. So this is essentially my uh, creating a button, and it has the word badges written inside of it. So I further modified this to indicate that if the button is red that means achievements have already been submitted or if it's green the student has received uh, no achievements yet so we'll look at where that is created as well but just note that just because you see no data in the award column doesn't mean that you don't need that so and another interesting thing about awesome tables is that this keyword hidden will hide the column from view. So notice how the award column is not hidden from view. So we need to see those buttons. But things like these URLs here, this is all hidden. This isn't visible information to my students. Here's badge one, badge two, and badge three. It just says no filter, no sign of the keyword hidden. Well, um, it wouldn't make sense to have a, a badging system where the badges weren't visible. So these three columns correspond to badge one, badge two, and badge three and are visible. So all in all, very little of our Google Sheet is actually visible. So going back to some of the logic that's happening in this awesome table, um, the first thing I'm going to reiterate is this edit achievement. So we've already established this strategy for getting a link to take us back to add new achievements or modify existing ones or remove achievements. So this information is simply coming from our form responses sheet and it's using a lookup. Essentially we're looking up the student name. So and we're going to look that up in this range of B2 to F in our form responses sheet. So we come back over to here. B2 we have the student name and we're going all the way over to F. So we're looking up the name of the student and we're counting over one, two, three, four, five. So five columns over or an index of five will return a URL to modify the student's achievements. So that's basically the destination of that badges button. So we click that badges button, it's going to take us to this URL. That's how those are connected. And this false indicates that we only want exact matches. So if you have students with the exact same name, you're going to have to want to be sure that there's some differentiator um, in the way that they are listed in your roster. So that's the the edit achievement. The submit achievement, now this is generated through another script. So again, 
I'm going to share the script information with you. Um, but if we go into the tools and we go to the script editor, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's happening with this one. So what we do here is we are building a Google form with some pre-filled information. And the only information we are pre-filling is the actual student name. So what this will allow you to do is create a URL where question one is answered with the name of the corresponding student. So what we're doing is we're referencing a Google Sheet, in our case, the class roster. So if we look over here, this is our roster. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to add one more row so you kind of see what, what's happening here. And I'm going to add student 5 and this student 5. Let's see. That's student 5's email address. Now, looking at this script, what this is going to do is it's going to pull uh, data from the class roster, and then it's going to get information related to the actual form. So what we need is the URL of the, the form. Um, we're actually collecting that automatically. Uh, because the form is related to the spreadsheet we're doing this in. And then what we're going to do is essentially build a new URL for that form where question one is answered with the student name. And I know it sounds like a mouthful, but basically what I'm going to do is go to run. And I'm going to run better build URLs. And what you're going to see happen is that it's going to put a new URL in column C right here. So let's actually split screen this a bit so you can see what's happening. And now I'm not running this on any specific trigger. I'm basically manually running this. So in a real life scenario, I would basically create my roster and then run the script one time so it creates a URL for every student. So here we go. I'm going to click run, better build URLs. And that happened really fast. So notice here, I have a new URL. And if I click on it, it says student five as the student name. So this form is now forever tied to student five. Now let's look at some of the other things that happened in that spreadsheet. Notice how column D is not filled in. So the reason column D is not filled in is because we haven't made any submissions at all. We haven't made any submissions at all. So once we do, this will now have a URL. In column E, this is basically the exact same thing as this URL. And the reason it's the same is because there's a formula in here. Again, this I'm going to share these functions with you and probably even just make a, an editable, make a copy of this particular sheet for you to play with. But what this function does is it's, a, it's creating a condition where if there is data in column D, then use that URL in column E. Okay, if there's no data in column D, then use the column C URL. So, and we notice that it's doing it is because I have another function right next to it that is basically adding the words edit or submit, depending on if I'm editing achievements or submitting new ones. So notice how in student five, the word submit is here, and this is submit because there's no data here. Once there's, in, once there's data in here, this will become edit as well. 
And again, all of this part is tied back to the template as well. So an interesting thing about the status column is this is dictating the color of our buttons as well. So I'm going to briefly digress over to the template. And you'll notice over here in my style sheet, the, uh, the uh, ahref class or the, the, the hyperlink class, if, if, this is, uh, if, if the word edit is here, I'm putting in a red button. All right, This is going to be the color red. If it says submit, it becomes uh, the color green. So, and that's, again, that information is assembled through the template. And I'll spend more time on the template later, but just so you can start to make some connections between the class roster and the template. So we've talked about the award column. The percent column is simple. It's a simple query that is just pulling the information from our form responses sheet. So this is coming from column J in our form responses sheet. This one is K, and here is L. And then the badges, the actual URL images, this is interesting. So I've created a condition, and again, this goes, because it's an array formula, it's going to go up and down the entire column. I've created a condition where if h3 to h, in other words, from here on down, and in this case it would be in column L, i3 to i. So basically these three columns correlate to these three columns. And the condition that's in place is that if h3 to h represents a whole, and whole is represented by the number one, we put in the URL of that badge. If not, leave it blank. That's what this space is indicating right there. So because this is 100%, a URL is going in right here. But if we go down one, one this, we have 50% here, and there is no URL here because it does not meet the criteria of being a whole. So that's how the display of badges are being pulled in to the awesome table as well. And I'm just, remember I had placed the badges in our badge library so I know which URL uh, that I'm going to use per badge. And then the progress bars, um, this is related to um, the template as well. And I'm not going to go into this part of, this is more template related than class roster related, so I'm going to save these three columns for when I talk more about the template. 